Today we are going to talk on finance, romance, or commitment. I know you like it. <laughs> Marriage is ordained by God. It is a blessing from God and it is perfect. We are meant to enjoy marriage, not to endure marriage. Today, God will beautify your marriage with good things in Jesus' name. Amen. Every shame and reproach will be taken away in the name of Jesus. Amen. For the singles, you will get married Amen. to the right person and enjoy a blissful marriage in the name of Jesus. Make sure you listen and put these things into practice so that you will get married this year in the name of Jesus. And this year will not pass you by in Jesus' name. Note, please don't go into marriage with the mindset of if it doesn't work, I will leave. Don't go into marriage, please. Don't go into marriage with the mindset of if it doesn't work, I will leave. Once you go into marriage with that mindset, it will never work. Honestly, it will never work. Don't go with it. Don't also go into marriage just because you want to satisfy your sexual desire. Because some of you, because you have been born again, maybe for a year now you have not slept with somebody. So we want to sleep. Somebody say, oh, they say my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. If I, <laughs> so let me marry. My brothers, my sisters. <laughs> you marry like that, you, you sleep today, tomorrow, within a week you get tired. Because you need money to feed. Have strength to sleep. Abby? Yeah. All right. That is not what marriage is all about. It is not a trial and error experiment. It is not a hit and run assignment. It is instituted by God for his own glory. I pray that God will give you wisdom and understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. In marriage, finance is important. Romance is also important. But more important is commitment. If you make finance your focus, when a temporal challenge comes, you may want to put your marriage aside. If you make romance your focus, if it is not there, you may look for alternative, which may lead to adultery. But when you make commitment to your priority, no matter the storm of life, you will remain committed to it. Commitment makes you stick or keep to your vow and promises. May God help you to succeed in your marriage in Jesus' name. Amen. No devil or circumstance will make you to separate or divorce in the name of Jesus. Amen. Malachi 2, 16a, I hate divorce. That is what message Bible says. That's the word of God. I hate divorce, says the God of Israel. God hates divorce, so you will not divorce in the name of Jesus Christ. Follow people that have succeeded, that are succeeding. Don't say, because this person has divorced, if it doesn't work, I divorce. God forbid. What is marriage? Marriage is the joining together of a man and a woman in holy matrimony in line with God's word. Papa gave the definition as marriage is a perfect union with two imperfect practitioners. It is a perfect union. There is no mistake in marriage because God instituted it, but men, women make mistakes, but not God. However, for your marriage to be colorful, the two 
of you, that's the husband and wife must accept responsibility to make it work. God backs those who are willing to take responsibility. God backs them. As you take responsibility, you will experience and enjoy a glorious marriage in Jesus' name. Amen. There are three basic factors that can add color to your marriage. And two of you, that's the husband and wife, must work together to ensure that these three factors are available in your marriage. One, finance. Finance is simply money. It is having money for the upkeep and running of the home. Finance is not just having money, but also the management of money by investing, budgeting, and saving to enhance continuous flow. I say finance is not just having money, but also the management of money by investing, budgeting, and saving to enhance continuous flow. Before marriage, God gave Adam work. That's Genesis 2, 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. God made sure Adam was not idle, but was doing something before marriage. So wisdom demands that you do something to be able to feed your wife. Don't be carrying portfolio up and down. Say you a business person, an estate person. Make sure you are doing something. Young lady, when a man comes and carry portfolio and suit, be going up and down. Find out what he's doing. I'm a businessman. I'm a business. And the women, the young lady, like always say, somebody that say that is a business person that he travels all over. You know, fantasy. Some people never want to be realistic in life. It was after Adam had started working that God gave him Eve. So make sure, young lady, a man that comes around you, make sure he works. So before you go into marriage, you must have a legitimate work you are doing as a source of income. When you get home, you read Genesis 2, 18, 21 to 24. Note, husbands must work to earn money and provide for the family. First Timothy 5, day, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. No man should be idle. It is anti-scripture. Even Second Thessalonians 3.10 For even when we were with you, this we have commanded you, that if any man will not work, neither should he eat. So if you don't work, if you don't want to work, then don't eat. Wives of wife-to-be, you must be prudent in managing the money. Don't be somebody that will spend money everywhere. Once you see money, everything about you is, comes out. Money is what that rules you. When the person doesn't have money, you know some women, it, once their husband don't have money, you see every, the house changed. Tension. You start fighting. Don't allow money rule you. You are not going to be married to money. Nobody is called Mrs. Money. Papa has told us that no woman should be a full-time housewife so that the person will not eat houseflies. And also, <laughs> so you must work. That is why you help me. To help me means somebody that will help somebody, not that somebody that will put somebody down. So this is finance you are talking. We are not talking to, going to say that men will do it alone. You should. We have to balance it. Teaching. You must work. And don't allow money rule you. Rule you. 
Some women, honestly, beautiful women. Because of money, you need to see their husbands, you will run. <laughs> Some women, eh, if monkeys have money, they would have married monkeys. <laughs> Don't be ruled by money, please. Your husband will get money. To enjoy <laughs> continuous flow of finance, make sure you pay your tithe and be a giver. Number two, romance. <laughs> romance is the feeling of love, comfort, pleasure you experience in a relationship with someone you love. Uh-huh. <laughs> That one I was talking about, my back talk quick, quickly. <laughs> Romance is the feeling of love, comfort, and pleasure you experience in a relationship with someone you love. It is a practical love affair that adds flavor in your marriage. It is a practical love affair that adds flavor in your marriage. Romance refers to the actions and feelings of people who are in love, especially behavior that is very caring and affectionate. Caring and affectionate. Every woman loves romance. And every man loves romance. Women love romantic men who can spare time out of their busy schedule to spend quality time with them. Is that not so? Yes. That is why I was telling you about money, money. If they buy jeep for you, build house and the man is not there. Are you Mrs. Jeep? <laughs> so, you love somebody that will spend time with you. As a wife, you can demonstrate your romance to your husband by showing genuine interest in his work, pleasing him even in the presence of his friends, telling him how attracting he looks, and, spend, and sending him lovely text messages. You construct messages. Tell your husband how you love him. The ones that are married. So this one we are talking is what you will do when you are married. Don't send it to that. <laughs> when you are married. So you construct. Call your, find a good name to call your husband. Don't say Papa John. Look for a good name, sweet name. You will call your husband. Papa John, Mama Mary. <laughs> Romance in the marriage is the effort spouse take to make sure they make their partner a priority. That is first. That after God do. It is what draws and makes their love amazing. Romance makes you go out of your way to express tenderness, making the person know that he or she is special. Without romance, <laughs> marriage will be old-fashioned and boring. Is that not so? It will be old-fashioned. You people are doing like if it's not. I will show you scriptures now. Calm down. Romance is scriptural. Examples of scriptures on romance are one Proverbs 5 18 to 19. Let their fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of their youth. 19. Let her be as a lovely hind and pleasant role. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. It's our love. Proverbs 5, 18 to 19. Easy to read version. 
Be happy with your own wife. Enjoy the woman you married while you were young. She is like a beautiful deer, a lovely form. Let her love satisfy you completely. Stay drunk on her love. Proverbs 5, 18, 19, message by, by Sons of Solomon, 7, 6. How fair and how pleasant art thou, O love, for delight. Solomon, Song of Solomon, 6, 2 to 3, message. Never mind, my lover is already on his way. So <laughs> Never mind, my lover is already on his way to this garden to browse among the flowers, touching the flowers. Of Song of Solomon 6, verse 3, New Living Translation. I am my lover's, and my lover is mine. He browses above his... <laughs> verse 2, before the verse 3. My lover has gone down to his garden, so he spies dead. To browse in the gardens and gather. <laughs> These scriptures we just read shows the, that romance is truly scriptural. So those who are religious should not make us look as if it is not holy. Learn to spice up your marriage with a touch of romance. It can make your day taste good, go well, and full of smiles. I say it can make your day taste good, go well, and full of smiles. So if you have some wife, that husband that tells you, oh, I love you, I do this, you're already happy, Abby. That the, that the one that we see is only the things that are bad you will be pointing at. You are fat, you are this. That's all you will know. <laughs> okay, commitment. Commitment is very important. Commitment is a pledge to give attention and affection to a cause or something without relenting. Commitment is a pledge, a pledge to give attention or an affection to a cause or something without relenting. It is the dedication to a long-term course of action, engagement, involvement. For your marriage to succeed, flourish, and blissful, you must be committed. Be committed to your marriage vow. Marriage vow. Wife must be, submit, uh, must be committed in submitting to her husband. And the husband must be committed to loving his wife. Papa, in his book, The Power of Commitment, gave us three areas of commitment. Commitment to God. You must be committed to God and his kingdom if you want him in your marriage. When you see God, your marriage cannot sink. Matthew 6, 33. Everything you need to make your marriage work will be added to you. So you'll be committed, three areas, committed to God, now committed commitment to your spouse. Commitment in your marriage, commitment to your marriage and family. That's where we dwell a little. Commitment in marriage is agreeing to stay together as partners forever 
until death. To stay together until death. You must be committed to making your marriage work. Be committed because whatever that is happening to any other family is what is happening to other family. But understanding and doing what God says make the other family to survive. So doing what the word of God says will eliminate crisis in your marriage. So whatever God tells you to do, do it. Colossians 3, 23. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. God's word says, be committed, so you must be committed. Commitment creates a bond of mutual understanding and trust and fosters self-esteem. Are you hearing me? In marriage, in marriage, commitment creates a, a bond of mutual understanding. Trust and fosters self-esteem. Lack of commitment can destroy marriage. Your marriage will not be destroyed in Jesus' name. Amen. So don't be busy, too busy, and then forget about your spouse, your partner. Don't say it does not matter. It matters a lot. Signs of commitment. Let me run it quickly. People that are committed, you are patient. The person is patient. It tolerates the spouse. That's number two. One, you are patient. The man, the woman, patient. It tolerates the spouse. You give your partner gifts. You don't trouble or threaten to leave the marriage. People that are committed, they don't threaten. I will pack now. Or get out of my house. Go this day. So you are not committed. The man that is always every time carry your wife box out. You are not a committed man. You are not a good husband. You are reliable. A committed person is reliable. You are not selfish or self-centered. You are straightforward and focused. That's a committed person. This science, that's how you see. You are dependable, adaptable, and complementary. Dependable. Your spouse can depend on you. You are kind, caring, and passionate. You believe in the dreams and desire of your spouse. You can't just want to succeed. You are not committed to the dreams and the desires of your spouse. Say, no, 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 that one doesn't matter. No, it matters. You appreciate your spouse. You encourage your spouse. You stand by your spouse in times of challenges. Commitment to assignment, that's your work. Your assignment is the channel through which money comes to you. So don't expect finance money if you don't work. You must be committed to your work. Say if you don't work, you should not eat. So whatever you want to do, do it well. Whatever your hand finds doing, do it well. I pray that you remain committed in your are to God, to your work, and to your marriage. God will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Make your marriage work by enhancing the flow of finance, nurturing romance, and staying committed to it. Why? Romance without commitment will lead to crisis. Finance without commitment will lead to frustration. But at the root of finance and romance is commitment. So commitment is at the root of finance and 
Romans. You must be committed. Please be committed. They give you money. Like they, some people that are being ruled by money. Let me uh, give you this. Uh, the joke of what we say, Pastor Gary said one time, a woman, they will do her everything. She will never smile. The husband came back and be playing with her. She refused to smile. Touch her here for wear. Touch her here. Do everything. He said, no. He said, my wife, what can I do for you to smile? He said that the only thing that can triggers, uh, triggers her or provokes her to life or makes her to life is take a bundle, put in the hand. Now, once you put that bundle in the hand, every part of her body starts, <laughs> triggers the body. So don't be that kind in the name of Jesus Christ. Make sure you love your husband. Husband, love your wife. Call her sweet names. Provide for your family. Make sure you walk. And be committed to your marriage vow. And you will succeed. Enjoy your marriage. In Jesus name.